Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the MQ-9 Reaper, the aerial drone from the US military. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. Upgraded MQ-1 Predator. When you take a look at the MQ-9 Reaper, and then another picture of the MQ-1 Predator, you'll notice that they look very, very similar. And in fact, they are siblings, if you will. The MQ-1 Reaper was the first of its kind, a large aerial drone that could operate with high endurance and was mainly used for high altitude surveillance. The MQ-9 Reaper is basically building on top of this platform and enhancing it with more capabilities. You could say that the MQ-9 is essentially the second generation of the MQ-1 Predator. And really, the only difference I could see, obviously besides the capability which has been greatly enhanced, is the rear epinage area of the tail fins and vertical stabilizers. Other than that, they look very similar. But of course, the insides are completely different and upgraded. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. 56.5 million dollars each. Now the reason I bring up the cost of each unit is because if you checked out my video about Iranian drones, you'll see that other countries produce drones at a much lower cost, including Turkish ones. Those drones from the Middle East are generally under a million dollars, probably hundreds or tens of thousands. You can see the MQ-9 Reaper is in its own class. You know, it's kind of like airplanes. Some airplanes are cheap and some are just ridiculously expensive. In the world of general aviation, like a Cessna, it will be, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars whereas a Gulfstream jet is $75 million. And so I think this is that level. The MQ-9 Reaper is more like a Gulfstream jet than a remote-controlled drone from a country that can produce it at a low cost. I'm not sure though if the lower cost drones from Iran and Turkey have a lesser capability than the MQ-9 Reaper. But the MQ-9 Reaper does have the state of art technology plus a 900 horsepower engine that is 9 times more powerful than its predecessor the MQ-1 Predator. Maybe all the advancements and all the classified equipment that we don't know about drove up the cost of this UAV. But either way, we all know that the military of the United States always produces weapons and devices and equipment that are more expensive than others. All right, let's get to the next fact, up to 1400 nautical miles. The MQ-9 Reaper is designed to loiter and fly for a long time. It's called high endurance and its range is 1400 nautical miles. It is very far for a remote control drone to do that. It can also fly at 50,000 feet. And so it is quite powerful to be flying independently, obviously with the operator controlling from a distance, but it is able to fly very far in remote locations away from the operator. This goes back to the previous section, perhaps the price tag is because of the ability for the NQ-9 Reaper to fly in the sky for long periods of time and to have an incredible range of 1400 nautical miles. If you think about it, small airplanes don't have that range. In fact, small jets, small light jets, don't have the range of the NQ-9 Reaper, and therefore, General Atomics, the maker of the MQ-9 Reaper, did a good job in terms of increasing the endurance and range of the Reaper so that the operator could be operating the drone in a safe distance and it doesn't need to return to refuel while out on a mission. It is very important to have that in the military capacity. Now let's get into the next fact, High Altitude Hunter Killer. As I mentioned in the previous section, the MQ-9 Reaper can fly up to 50,000 feet. Again, this is more than your average Boeing 737, 777s, 
These fly around 35 to 36, maybe 40,000 feet. And another important part is the MQ-1 Predator was only high altitude surveillance. And the upgrades to the MQ-9 Reaper allow it to carry more ammunition and weapons and truly become a hunter-killer UAV. And so I think it is a step up in the UAV world to have the MQ-9 Reaper to be fully armed and ready to cause significant damage to the enemy. The MQ-9 Reaper can take on way more payload in terms of ammunition and missiles and rockets than the MQ-1 Predator. In this lethal capacity, the MQ-9 Reaper is indeed way more powerful than the previous generation Predator. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact, a crew of two. When you think about operating these drones, you may think it only takes one person. But actually, the MQ-9 Reaper requires a crew of two. There is a pilot, and there is a sensor and equipment operator. You can imagine the second one, the sensor equipment operator, to be the one handling the camera in front of the airplane and making sure all the surveillance targets are being surveilled, as well as launching the munitions and rockets and missiles at the target. The pilot will primarily be focused on controlling the drone, making sure it doesn't fly into the terrain, and making sure that it is stable and flying correctly. Of course, to make sure it's on target and on the right heading. I wonder if in the future, when drones get bigger and more powerful, if they would need more than a crew of two. Perhaps they might need a weapons officer plus the sensor operator, and vice versa. Also, the pilots. Could it be that they need two pilots to make sure the drone handles correctly? Who knows? Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.